seen all these statistics before, but it's always important to remember that breast cancer really is the leading cause of cancer among women. These are the latest statistics in the U.S. from 2014, and it shows that there are over 200,000 new cases of breast cancer every year, and it's also the second leading cause of, breast ca of cancer death, with 40,000 cases uh, per year. Lung cancer, although it's less common than breast cancer, is actually the leading cause of cancer uh, death, and that's because it's often diagnosed later and is a more uh, fatal uh, cancer. So the impact of breast cancer in the United States is really uh, tremendous. And the other thing that's interesting about breast cancer is um, what you have here, and you can see, is that the rates of breast cancer among different ethnicities are different. So Caucasian white women are the most uh, high uh, rate of breast cancer, whereas the other groups are lower. But there are interesting disparities in what's in pink are the death rates of breast cancer. And so you can see here on the slide that even though Caucasian women are more two? likely to get breast cancer when that you look at the height of the green bar, actually African Americans are the much, much more likely to die of breast cancer um, even though they're less likely to get breast cancer than an Caucasian uh, person. And this really emphasizes the importance of uh, prevention and also early uh, detection. Well, I'd like to first talk a little bit about early diagnosis of breast cancer. And in case someone hasn't had a mammogram before, this is actually what a mammogram machine uh, looks like. And as you can see, what happens is the woman steps up next to uh, the machine. And then you can see there's that gray plate. And that gray plate is moving. And what will happen is the technician will slowly lower that uh, plate. And then the breast is actually compressed between these uh, two plates. And what you see here is they take, then take two views. They take one view this way, which is what's called the cranial caudal. They shoot this way. And then they also take what's called the medial lateral oblique, which is this way. They shoot that way, um, diagonally. So they take two views of the right breast, this way, and then diagonally, and then two views of the left breast as well. And this is a, a standard uh, mammogram. There's one more interest now in what's called breast homosynthesis or a 3D mammogram. Both of those words mean the same thing. So I put them both up there, but like I said, they're, they, both of them mean exactly the same thing. And you still are placed, the breast is still placed between two uh, uh, compression paddles, like it was for a regular mammogram. But what happens is the x-ray machine then takes multiple images of uh, the breast going all the way around. There's a little bit more radiation with the 3D mammogram versus a regular mammogram. It's also takes a little bit more skill for the radiologist to read. So some places who maybe just started having a 3D mammogram, the radiologist may not be as comfortable as reading a 3D mammogram as a regular mammogram, but it is something that's becoming increasingly common, although not all places have a 3D mammogram. So for instance, I work at the Data Farber, and we still do not have a 3D mammogram yet, although the hospital across the street, our partner hospital, the Brigham and Women's, does have a 3D mammogram, and a lot of places are gradually converting uh, over. Uh, the Mass General, where some of the other people, uh, physicians here are from, does have a 3D mammogram as well. And so the reason we talk about early detection is, as um, was said earlier during the introduction, what you can see here is what the five-year survival is for someone with an early stage breast cancer, which is a stage one, versus a stage four, um, which is a later stage breast cancer. And as you can see, survival is much, much better for people with an early stage breast cancer. I think the other thing that's important to remember is in addition to having a better prognosis if the cancer is caught early, you also get less treatment. I mean, no one wants to have a mastectomy instead of a lumpectomy. No one wants to have to get chemotherapy or anything like that. So in addition to being able to have better survival, you can also get less treatment. And so those are two reasons why early diagnosis is important. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, because this is actually a new law in Massachusetts, uh, and it's a law in some other states as well, is that if someone has more dense breast, it actually is something that is now part of your mammogram report. So I want to bring it up in case anyone gets a mammogram and sees what this breast density means. 
So basically what breast density measures is what we're looking at the different kinds of tissue that make up the normal uh, breast. High breast density means that they have more breast tissue, more connective tissue. Someone with less dense breast or low breast density is more fat tissue in the breast. And the reason we care about breast density is that people who have denser breasts have a slightly higher chance of breast cancer in either breast compared to someone with a less dense breast. And so that's why this law has been passed. And so Massachusetts, as of January 1st of this year, requires that if you have dense breasts, that it is something that's put on your mammogram report and also told to your provider who orders that report. And as it turns out, Massachusetts is not alone in this. There are actually 20 other states already that have a very uh, similar uh, law. What we, oh, and this is to give you an example of someone on the left who has a fatty breast and then someone on the far right who has a more uh, dense uh, breast. And as you can see, in addition to the...